Somebody there, praise the Lord. An uncommon man introducing an uncommon champion for uncommon achievers. Are you there? Today is the day to change your history. Turn your life around and put power, unction, authority upon your life. We're going to forget the past. Whatever happened before today, failure will forget. Defeat will forget. Sickness will forget. Poverty will forget. You are going to become you. I'm talking to somebody there. You are going to become an uncommon achiever. Would they count those who climb up, those who achieve, those who make it in life, those who are on top of the ladder in your country, anywhere you are in this world, they will count you. Father, we come today to this session wanting by your power, by your anointing, to lead every eaglet to become an eagle and to soar beyond their imagination. We pray, Lord, today, fulfill it in every life in Jesus' name. Today, do something. Something uncommon. Something unprecedented. Something that clears the sky for the eagles to soar today. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Turn to the person by your side and tell him, tell her, welcome to an uncommon assembly. God bless you all. You can see that we're looking at Isaiah. I'm looking at chapter 40. And I'm reading from verse 28, Isaiah. Chapter 40, reading from verse 28. As thou not known, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29, he giveth power to the faith. What are you? Power. He will give to you today. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Verse 30, it says, even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. In verse 31, but it says others that do not have God, others that do not have divine assistance, they'll fail, they'll fall. But, he's talking about you now. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not fade. You know, when I was a younger believer, I read this verse, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I said, okay, what do I do? I wait, 
I close my mouth. I fold my hands. And he said, what are you doing there? I said, I'm waiting. Ah, they said, that's not what it means. They that wait upon the Lord. How do you wait? Some people say, you go into your chamber, into your corner, and kneel down. You don't have to read, just kneel down. You don't have to work, just kneel down. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I said, is that what it means? Let me tell you. Wait, double you there. It means welcome the Lord in your life. Welcome the Lord in your life. Let us wait here in the spiritual sense. Then you walk with the Lord. You walk. Everything you are going to do, the Lord is by your side. And you are by the side of the Lord. And you win with the Lord. That's waiting. It's not just being idle, loafing, and standing there and doing nothing. Welcome him to your life. And as you welcome him, he calms your life. He energizes your life. And now you are walking with the Lord and you will win. I'm talking to winners here today. <laughs> A, accept the Lord. You know, there's no point. I'm waiting. I'm just standing there and I'm not doing anything. You accept the Lord and you abide in the Lord. And then you will achieve what the Lord achieves. Are they still around? I see you there. You will achieve. That's what it means to wait. The waiting is not being idle. The waiting is not being, uh, you know, ignorant. And then I'm just standing there. I there is to entreat the Lord. I'm asking for something. I have a height to climb. I have a peak to reach. And I entreat the Lord. I interest the Lord. You know, when I come to him, I say, God, you are a great God. I'm your child. I want to be great because if I am deficient, if I am down there, I will not bring honor and glory to your name. That interests the Lord. Because I entreat the Lord. I interest the Lord. I interact with the Lord. I'm going to take a decision. I'm going to go a new way. I'm going to cross a bridge. I'm interacting with the Lord. Those are the people that in a dynamic way, they wait on the Lord. Tea there is to trust the Lord. Those are the people waiting on the Lord. They are trusting the Lord. They taste the Lord. Taste the Lord and see that he is good. In this life, from day to day, from stage to stage, from the level you are to the next level, you will taste of the goodness of the Lord. And then you treasure the Lord. He gave me a new life. He gave me a new being. He gave me a new personality. He gave me a new sight to soar. I treasure the Lord. My daughters, my sons, that is what it means. That I wait on the Lord. Now look at this. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run while about to start running. You are being slow in your progress. You are being slow in your achievement. You are being slow in your accomplishment. But now it is time we're going to run. Give me a good amen. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That fainting spirit 
I cast it out of your life in Jesus' name. Now, today, the renewal and release of the Lord's liberated egos. The renewal. You are here for a renewal. I'm not here for play. Are you here for play? I'm not here just to attend meeting. Are you here just to attend meeting? You are better, you are greater than that. Your life, your time is more precious than that. I want to tell you, a young man, a young woman, a young professional, anywhere you are now, if you are not here on the ground, share with me, all the same, connect with me, connect with me. Drop every other thing and let us have renewal and then a release of the Lord's liberated egos. You know, I'm going to touch one, two, three. Three points. Number one, the revelation of our semblance to egos. Number two, the restoration of the sight of the ego. Number three, the realization of the strength of an ego. Number one, our semblance to an eagle that he is we resemble the eagles that's why the lord said that as a wait on the lord it will renew your strength you will run you will not be tired you will not be weary you will not be weak the winds that blow and the things that happen in your school in your college, beyond your college, where you are serving, and in your profession, all those things will not weary you. Yeah. I said, will not weary you. Yeah. There'll be that Newton's law in your life to every action. There is a reaction, and everything that comes in your life, anything that militates against your life, you will soar. You will rise. And those things will not stop you. They will not stop me. They will not stop me. If we're talking about the realization of the strength of an eagle. Let's start from number one. Number one, we're looking at the revelation of our semblance to eagles. Let, let me repeat that I say again. Chapter 14, verse 31. It says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk, and they shall not fade. Now, when you are running, you have to be free of all entanglements. If you carry load at the back, if you carry load at the head, and if your hands are not free, and then you are running, your speech and your progress will be impeded. You will not be able to run and be as agile, as active as you ought to be. Therefore, we need to understand what it means to be a semblance, to be in likeness to the eagle. It says there, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. How does God make of you, make of me an eagle? Look at this. He emancipated by Emmanuel. Emancipated by Emmanuel. You see, before you come to know the Lord, Quite a lot of things weigh you down. I was jolted. I was disappointed. 
You're going for an exam. My friend, boyfriend, girlfriend disappointed me, and your heart is down. Your mind is down. We wanted to play a deal. In that place, they caught us. And now we're thinking of what they will do. And then we went into explo. And all that now weighs on your mind. The first thing, if you're going to be an ego, that everything that brought guilt, condemnation, and a load upon your mind, upon your heart, number one E of the ego is emancipation by Emmanuel, and he will set you free today. I'm talking to somebody there. I see you there. He will emancipate you. All the roads that bind you, all the cords that tie you down, emancipation today in Jesus' name. Look at Romans, Romans chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 2. In Romans chapter 8, looking at verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Me. Me. Has made me free. Now, maybe you never you know, come to any meeting or, you know, uh, held before. And you say, I am not one of them. Uh -uh. Don't talk like that now. I want to take you. Somebody I'd never seen. Somebody I'd never known. Reminds me when I was uh, teaching in the class, whether secondary school, high school, university. I used to do remedial teaching. Those who have gone to other classes and they came to my class and they said they will never learn, they will never achieve. I got interested in them. I am interested in you today. And if you have not ever been in a meeting like this, you said, I'm on the other side. Don't worry, just come in, remedial teaching from today, from this morning, your life will be emancipated. You come to Christ, you say, Lord, I heard that there is emancipation, ego. And if you don't have that emancipation, how can you have the life and the strength and the soaring of an ego? E, emancipated by Emmanuel. A, A means accepted with his authority. Accepted with his authority. Will he accept me? I've always been a mediocre. I've always been a big zero. Everything I've done, they just try to push me ahead. Let him go to the next class so we can create vacancy for other people. And then you got a job. It was like the same thing. They just say, okay, pass him on. Is then the profession? No promotion. And no going up the ladder. Now, you are accepted by the authority of the Lord into a new class. Into a new level. Because we're told in Ephesians chapter 1, reading from verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted personal he has made me accepted personal he has made me accepted have you done something in the past you're so much ashamed and you will not come in the door is open for you as you enter in all the shame of the past everything will go away all the things that people remembered against you and they said he cannot make it he cannot move on he cannot achieve she cannot make it all those things are forgotten today 
look up here let your eyes meet my eyes you are accepted today by his authority yeah. accepted yeah. accepted yeah. accepted yeah. and then the eagle needs a G there there's an E there's an A and then this is grace granted by God grace granted by God you know when people read the passage of scripture by Paul the Apostle I am what I am by his grace they think only an apostle could say that. Uh-uh. A student can say that. Uh-uh. An engineer can say that. A doctor can say that. What you cannot do by yourself, in your profession, in your line of activity, the grace of God will come into your life today. Amen. And you'll be able to say, I am what I am. You will be what you ought to be. You know, when I look at the past, as a student in the secondary school, I just thought I was there. Young people go to school, and so daddy sent me to school. I wasn't really into studying you know studying and reading was like punishment but god said he will do something in my life that i never dreamt of and the same thing with you maybe you have been you know at the back of the class and you never thought you'll be an achiever and god sent me to quarter stage for you in particular to tell you that what you could not do by your own allow me to use this word they call it gumption what, what gumption cannot achieve the grace of God has come will achieve in your life he did it for me and he loves you as much as he loves me. As you come in and you're emancipated, as you come in and you're ex accepted, grace will come into your life. Yeah. And in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 14, it says, And the grace of our Lord, not just my Lord, our Lord, it's your Lord, it's my Lord, it's our Lord. The grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Congratulations. The grace of God is flowing into your life today. E, emancipated. A, accepted. G, grace, granted. L lifted by the Lord. Lifted by the Lord. Lifted by the Lord. You know, I've always watched those good mothers, the child sitting on the ground, and the child wants to be lifted. What does the child do? The child will raise the hand. To signify, mommy, carry me, lift me up, take me higher. And today, with uplifted hands, you come to the Lord. He comes to lift you up. <laughs> to take you away from mediocrity and take you up to a manifestation of a new life in Jesus' name. <laughs> Lifted by the Lord. You know, those who have seen you before, they will see you after today. They will say, are you the same boy? The same girl? The same young professional? 
You see, yes, my name is still the same, but I got lifted up. I got lifted up. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 8. It says, He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill, to set them among princes, and to make them inherit the throne of glory. Are you still there? Do you see the plan of God for you? Do you see what God will do in your life even today? And then he says, For the pillars of the earth are the laws, and he has set the world upon them. He'll set your life on a pillar. You'll not be a static person. What happened yesterday? happening today and then happening in the future your life from day to day from week to week from month to month from year to year when i see you another time maybe next year when i see you yes, i'll say but you were at this level at that time you say pastor your prophecy came through in my life the Lord has lifted me up. He enabled through empowerment. Enabled through empowerment. Everything the Lord has ordained that you will be. Everywhere the Lord has ordained that you will get to. Empowerment has now come. Empowerment in your life. And then you'll be energized and enabled through empowerment. Look at First Timothy chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 12. And thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me. Enabled me. Enabled me. You know, we uh, teachers, we teach this class now. And we enable them for the next class, for the next level. And those students move on. We have another new search. And this new search, like we did for the search before. And we enable them. We do it again to this new search. And then they pass on after we enable them, empower them. Then we have a new set again. That's what Christ does. He did it for Paul and his search. He enabled them. They have moved on. Now my class has come at this time. And this same Christ, energizer, this same Christ that enabled the search before me, I am sure, even if I don't know anything now, it will enable me for the next level. Come, come, come to the new class. Come to the new search. And wherever you are, whoever you are, it will not ask you, What's your religion? It will not ask you, what's your background? It will not ask you, after all, when I was teaching in the school and the students came in, I didn't say, are you from town? Are you from village? Are you from this side or that side? All those, my students, I just had one goal, to enable them. And all those who are hearing my voice today, one thing God has in mind, he wants to enable you for the next level. And then you become truly an eagle, emancipated by Emmanuel, accepted with his authority, grace granted by God, lifted by the Lord, enabled through his empowerment. I come to point number two now. Point number two is the restoration of the sight of the eagle. You know, the eagle is life 
They, are, they lie for the eagle, depends on his side. It's there up above, looks down and can see very far. As he sees very far, he's able to just dive down and he never misses his target. The time has come for you. You will never miss your target. You know, if somebody lives through life, no target, no goal, no ideal, no peak of the mountain, how will he be able to get at his target? Somebody said, if you target nothing, that's exactly what you get in life. You go through life, you target nothing. Who are you? I'm just a boy, an average boy from an average family, from an average village, from an average local government, from an average community, from a problematic country. That's who you are. Ah, we change that image today. You will go from average and go to the top. It's like that cork that they use in stopping, uh, you know, the liquid flowing out from the bottle. And they put it on the sea, on the river. Stone may sink, but that cork will keep on floating. You'll be up. You will not sink down to the bottom. When the stone sinks to the bottom, we can't take its picture. We can't see that stone is there in the bottom. But when the power of the Almighty God comes in your life and lifts you up, and then you're on top, I'm on top. Somebody there, I'm on top. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Heaven wants to take your picture. Not when you are down below, but while you are up there, heaven's camera focuses upon you. Yeah. I am coming up. I said I am coming up. Now, now, what does it mean to have the sight of an eagle? I come to the eagle again. E, the eyes of an eagle. The eyes of an eagle. You know, in life, sometimes success is very near, but we can't see it. Tomorrow, a new door will open for you, yeah. and you will enter into a new realm. Yeah. But many people today cannot see tomorrow until God touches your eyesight. And it brightens your eyesight. And you will see what you have never seen. And you will go where you have never gone. And you will achieve what you have never achieved. By the eyes of an eagle. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. The eyes of your understanding. Not the eyes physical in your head the eyes of your understanding the understanding of spiritual understanding of professional understanding in life understanding in the demography of the world that no matter where you are you have a new understanding you will see the road map you will see the ladder. You will see the people. The Lord will connect you with the people that will move you up. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory, the glory of his inheritance in the saints. The new time now has come. Your eyes will not be dim. Yeah. You will not be blind to your future. You will not be blind to your progress. 
the eyes of an eagle. A, the arts of an achiever. The arts of an achiever. There are things achievers do. They don't just stand, stay in one place and not move and not act. The athlete has to act, practice every day. The student has to act, read every day. And the professional has to act. He has to find out what's going on in my field. What are others doing today? And the people and the tools we use, we have to act with the new tool. It is that activity, activity for progress, that you are not just idle, you are not stagnant, you are not staying in one place. Every day is adding to your progress. And there's something about an achiever. They do what they are scared doing. You know, in life, there are things that scare us. A new field, a new study, a new research, a new exam, a new thing that we never did before. New things scare us. But achievers are the people that will act in spite of being scared. Even an athlete, he looks at all the people competing and says, can I do that? Can I compete against that person? But it is the acting. If you never did something new, you'll never know you can be an achiever. Come to the class of those who act like achievers. Are they there today? I said, are they there today? And look at First Kings chapter 1, reading from verse 6. And his father had not displeased him at any time. Why hast thou done so? You see, there are people... If they're sitting down, they're not reading, they're not acting, they're not going the place they ought to go. They don't like a father, a mother, a teacher, a coach, a trainer, a mentor asking them, what are you doing there? Why don't you get up? Why don't you move? Because if you remain there solid, like a log of wood, then there's no success. It is knowing you're not a log of wood. You have a brain. You have a mind. You have a heart. You have something planted in you to make you rise and to make you move. You will act today. I said you will act today. Read that book. Ask that question. Go that new way. Develop that strategy. Make that plan. And follow and follow through. You'll be an achiever. I said you'll be an achiever. I will be an achiever. Say it confidently. Why did I tell you to repeat that? Sometimes when we say something you know, that our mind is not used to, we're used to saying, you know, I'm average, I'm a mediocre, I'm not an achiever, so and so comes from a different family, so and so has a different background, I'm not like them, I'm satisfied where I am, if that is what your mind has ever been hearing of you, when you now say, I am an achiever, your mind will look back and say, who is that talking? It will look strange. Then you say it again, I am an achiever. You don't care what you were in the past. 
You don't care what people have said to you in the past. You don't care what even teachers have said to you in the past. This is a new day for me. This is a new day for me. And when I say that, my mind may question that. You know, I have to move on and go beyond my old mind. And when I do that, my new mind will catch up with my speech. Your new mind will catch up with your speed. Amen. Uh, look at verse 7 there. First Kings chapter 1, verse 7. And he conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruiah. You know, if you're going to do anything, you cannot stay a lone ranger. You have to confer, you have to discuss. You have to consult. You have to have, if you're a student, a studying partner. If you are a professional, you look at people, we call them models, models of achievement. And they have gone before us. We confer with them. We consult with them. We have a mentor. Now, now look at this. You cannot choose your father and your mother. That one is settled. But you can choose whose child you are. What do I mean by that? Those achievers, they are writers, they are authors. Those models, they are writers, they are authors. If you have been born in a place where there is uh, no matra model, and there is no challenge for moving on. You can choose authors, you can choose speakers, you can choose writers, and you become learners under them by the way you consult. G here is the gods of a go-getter. Look at an eagle. An eagle has the gods of a gold getter. You know, the um, eagle never says, I can't do that. I can't fly as far. I can't go as long as that. I can't move that obstacle, that sea, that ocean is too wide for me. I cannot fly over. No. The eagle has the gods of a go-getter. And when the Lord touches you today, where are you? He'll touch you today. Yeah. You'll not be in that place just to feel, just to sit on the chair and just to feel vacancy. It will give you the gods of a go-getter. Yeah. Who is a go-getter? I see it, I am for it. I see it and it is for me. I am for it. And it is for me that two-way channel will create a path by which I go and get it. Go get her. Go get her. What are you? You will have. You will have that rope that tied you down, that you're always there, always there. And you're breathing as if you're breathing your last. You take a few steps and you're tired and weary. Today, everything will be driven out of your life. The gods of a go-getter. L is lit above the ladder. Lit above the ladder. You see, there are people, their father, their mother, I put a ladder for them on the wall. And it says, my son, my daughter, climb that. If you get to the top of that ladder, I'm satisfied. And sometimes the ladder is shorter, is smaller than what your heavenly father has for you. Our fathers mean well. 
They have not gone beyond this level. Our mothers mean well. They have not gone beyond this level. Our primary school teachers mean well. They have not gone beyond this level. And when they are talking to us, they say, my boy, they say, my daughter, look at the ladder. Climb this ladder. And once you get to this place, which place? The place they got to. Once you get to the place we got to, you're all right. But this is a new century. This is a new decade. And if we only stage, where they stage, they, did, they were not living at the age of technology. At the age of the social media. At the age, you know, now, knowledge used to double every 50 years. And later, knowledge used to double every 25 years. But people will tell you now, those who are in the field, they tell you that every two years now, knowledge doubles. And it makes the encyclopedia that was written 20 years ago, 30 years ago, it makes those encyclopedias useless. Why? Knowledge now doubles every two years. And when somebody who lived 20 years ago and retired 20 years ago and said, say ladder for you and says climb it to this level, that ladder is too small for you. I said the ladder is too small for you. And you'll be lifted beyond the ladder. Lifted. Somebody help me out. Lifted. Somebody help me shout it. Lifted. Lifted beyond and above the ladder. Ezekiel chapter, four, chapter 3 verse 14. So the spirit lifted me up. That spirit will come to you today. It will lift you up. And when you are lifted up, it's like when you are when you are in an aeroplane and you look down, the things you never saw when you are in the car on ground. When you are lifted by the aeroplane, you look down, you will see good, good things you have never seen in your life. The Spirit lifted him up and the Spirit of God will lift you up. E, endurance of the exceptional. Endurance of the exceptional. You know, we go for an exam. I'm used, you're used to having air con working well in the room anywhere you are. In that exam hall, the air con will not function. Everybody is sweating. And instead of thinking on answering their questions, the questions on the exam paper, they are asking, why is the air con here? Uh, it's not functioning. What are the you know, organizers of this place? What are they doing? That's all they're asking. And they're not concentrating on their exam. You know, sometimes you get to a new place of work and you see the people there, you come in, uh, and the porter in the entrance will not even say welcome. They don't have a smile. They just stay there and say, why are they like that? And then you come to your office and the other people who are you seeing, you know, offices around, they didn't even welcome you. You say, what kind of people are here? They cannot understand that if you are going to be an eagle, you have to endure everything in an exceptional way. And in your life from today, you're not looking at what people think, what people say, how people look, how people act, how people react to you, because you're going to have the endurance that is exceptional. And nothing will move you away from your goal. And nothing will move you away from the height that God has for you. I'm talking to somebody there. Endurance. 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 You know, 
the rain will fall endurance the sun will shine endurance the wind will blow endurance and uh, people who don't mind their business they will criticize you endurance and those who do not have uh, the same plan and the same road map as you have they will talk and they will talk negative their talk will not bring you down their talk will not bring me down. <laughs> Endurance. Look at this in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness. Endure hardness. You know, I take up a book in my field. And I want to read. And the preface, the introduction is clumsy and i say what kind of book is this but that's the textbook and that's the book that will lead you to the final end of that course endure hardness i take up the book and the vocabulary of the man is not simple and not readily understood i say this is tough and this is hard yes but that's the book and you'll go through and you will master everything you'll see if the writer if the author has enough wisdom to write this book that I say hard, then if that writer is able to have the wisdom to write that, I will get that same wisdom. I'm talking to you. I will even go beyond the wisdom of that writer. How does that come? By looking at every challenge, every difficulty on your way, and you endure hardness, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, the eagle, eyes of an eagle, acts of an achiever, gods of a go-getter, lead above the ladder, endurance of the exceptional. I'm going there. I'm getting there. Soon and very soon. Soon and very soon, <laughs> you know, if you are maybe a teenager now and you say, I'm getting there, and you get there in 10 years' time, that's not good enough. Others, your classmates, they get there in two years' time, in three years' time, match that. Make that equal. And no, it's not just getting there. You are getting there on time. Yeah. Professional, you are getting there on time. Yeah. Endurance of the exceptional. I come to point number three here. Number three, this is the realization. I will realize. I will realize. The realization of the strength of an eagle. I want you to check up from any hunter. They will not say, I went, I didn't even have to shoot, but I just found the eagle weak, without strength, and I just stretched out my hand and I took the eagle in its weakness. No hunter ever finds an eagle weak, anemic, no strength, no power, no hunter will ever find you weak and anemic. Yeah. They will not catch you. They say he's so weak, we spoke only one word and it brought him down. So weak, we spoke only one word and brought her down. Now, you're going to be stronger than any little word of people eyeing you and looking at you or people's comment bring you down just like that. You're going to have, I am going to have, talk, 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 I am going to have 
the strength of an eagle. Look at the eagle there. Already recreated, restored, renewed, released. What do you see? Number one, E, exploits of the extraordinary. Exploits of the extraordinary. Look at your surrounding. Look at the people in the same field where you serve and what you do. And look at your colleagues. How do you see yourself as you come into the hands of the Almighty? Exploits of the extraordinary. Look at Daniel chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse 32. It says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. But, but, the people that do know their God shall be stronger and do exploits. That amen did not come very well. The people that do know their God and they say, God is my God. God is my maker. And God is the one to recreate me and to refashion me and to remodel me. The people that do know their God and they say, he is my God. Not just the God of the world, the creator of the world. He is my creator. The people that do know their God shall be strong. You'll be stronger than your problems. Stronger than your challenges. Stronger than the holders in the way that stand between you and success in Jesus' name. And they will do exploits. Eagles, exploits of the extraordinary. A, attitude of the advancing. Attitude of the advancing you see attitude matters a lot you see when you are with people the people who agree with you good attitude the people who don't agree with you you still have a smile on your face you say i understand if i was facing the same problem they were facing maybe i would have acted like that we are going on the road and somebody calls in front of you you say the man maybe is in an appointment and he may miss his appointment he's not a bad fellow he did that because he was wanted to go get to the place in time and I give him chance I say go ahead you don't do like other people do curse them insult them abuse them you have a good attitude I have a good attitude I have a good attitude. We're supposed to take food, and somebody rushes on to take the food before me. Good attitude. Maybe he's very hungry. He might have a challenge that I don't have. So I stay back, and I give him chance in life, in life, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, in school, at work, in your profession, with other people, interacting with people, wear a smile and rejoice every time and don't be a cranky fellow a fellow that is you know, always angry about everybody and about everything have the attitude the people who are ongoing and the people who are advancing in life they have the attitude of the advancing in the first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 rejoice evermore rejoice evermore look at verse 17 there it says pray without ceasing when you have a knot you cannot crack and when you have a crossroad that you cannot go over no, don't grumble, don't murmur, don't stay there and say, why is the government like this? Why are the people who should make the road? Why are they like this? Have a good attitude and pray. If men cannot solve the problem, pray without ceasing. Look at verse 18. It says, in 
everything. When you are sweating in everything, when you're feeling cold and shivering in everything, when they delay you on the line before you get into that important office, you have a good attitude in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And good attitude will never fail. It will not fail you. Give me a good day. Amen. And they will have a living light beyond the local land. Oh, we have G there. Great grace. Great grace for giant goals. Make your goals giant goals. Make your goals high goals. And then the Lord will, you, will give you great grace. Great grace. I will have great grace. Amen upon your life. And then look at uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. Look at that. The people were not shaking, but the place was shaking. You see, there are people, the people shake, but the place don't shake. The place doesn't change. There are people, they are always shaking, they are always changing, and the situation brings them down, but when you know you have a God that will change every situation, the place will shake. Amen. The people around that had vowed before heaven and earth that you will never cross these premises, they will shake. Amen. Your prison will shake. Your confinement will shake. But you will not shake in your faith. You will not shake in your upward journey. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they speak the word with boldness. Look at verse 33. In verse 33, and great and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace and great grace and great grace was upon upon tell, tell me upon upon them all Am I part of upon them all? Are you part of upon them all? You're going out of this place with the strength of an ego. And the great grace of the Lord will be upon your life. An L leading light beyond the local land. Leading light. If you look at your community and you see our people, I've never held this office in the land. You'll be the number one to hold that office. They say, our people here, I've never gone to that point. Well, they say, you're the one to break the record. I'll be there. I will be there. What you say is what you see. I will be there. You will be there. Can I tell you something? You'll be the best thing that ever happened to your family. The best child, the best son, the best daughter that ever happened to your family. Look at Psalm 61, I'm reading from verse 2. Psalm 61, verse 2. From the ends of the earth will I 
cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me. Mark that in your Bible. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Now, he exploits of the exceptional. A attitude of the advancing. G great grace for giant goals. L leading light beyond the local land. E energy from the eternal energizer. Energy. Energy. Till you get to the top of your mountain, you will not be weary. You will not be tired. Until you get to the achievement of that vision that the Lord has painted in your heart. I see you a runner. I see you an achiever. I see you as an energized professional in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. It says, Fear thou not. No money, fear thou not. No sponsorship yet, fear thou not. No admission yet, fear thou not. No place yet, fear thou not. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed, be not confused, be not overwhelmed, do not be distraught, for I am thy God. I will strengthen you. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Look at verse 13 there. In verse 13, for I the Lord thy God will hold your right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help you. When there's no father, there's no mother, I will help you. When there's no sponsor, no financier, I will help you. When there's no long leg and no contact, I will help you. When the door is closed to everybody around you, fear not, I will help you. Where is he? Where is she? I welcome you to the assembly of eagles soaring on high. It's bowed, and eyes closed, you know, the very first step we take is emancipation by Emmanuel. Emancipation by Emmanuel. Accepted with his authority. Grace granted by God. Lifted by the Lord. Enabled through empowerment. That's the first step. Ex bowed and eyes closed. You want to have an intimate connection with this Emmanuel that will lift you up. Wherever you are, raise up that hand. Something you've never known will happen to you today. Something you've never seen. Connection, connection, connection with Emmanuel. He'll save you. It'll change your life. Or are you raise up that hand? I'm looking for you. The Lord is looking for you. And if you're raising up the hand, please stand up. Please stand up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stand up wherever you are and say, Lord, I am here. Lord, I am here. For all this to happen, I need to be connected with Christ so that my life, my destiny will achieve the purpose of the everlasting eternal God. Where are you? Stand up there. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, 
I pray all these who have raised up their hands here and in every other place, I pray that your mighty power will turn their lives around now in Jesus' name. Forgive their past. Let new life come to them right now. And I pray that the real life of the lifted one you grant to them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let me have a good eagles. Amen. Now, 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 now. Somebody help me shout now, now. For everything I've spoken to become part of your personality. No tiredness, no weakness, no rope cord tying you down. I'm going to pray a special prayer now for everybody. And you need to stand up to receive this, to receive this. Everything that tied you down or breaking every you. What is destroying the works of the devil. Your future is brighter than your past. New life, new level, new height for everyone in Jesus' name. Raise up that hand. That hand will write something successful. That hand will achieve what you have never achieved. Every negative connotation on that hand, the blood of Jesus wipes everything away. They say good luck. If there's good luck for anybody, you are the partaker of that good luck. Father, in Jesus' name, everyone here today without exception, all the failures of the past, all the defeats of the past, all the sicknesses of the past, all the diseases of the past, all the bad luck of the past, all the non-achieving of the past, wipe everything away in Jesus' name. The cord, the rope that bound them to the past, break everything. Shatter everything. Break every yoke. Destroy the works of the devil. Set the new eagles free. For a new life. For a new level. For a new achievement. Take them up the ladder. To the top of the ladder. Beyond above their ladder. Confirm goodness and mercy in every life. Let them know they're new. Let them feel new. Let them have a new assurance, a new eyesight, a new semblance to the eagle, a new strength of the eagle. You are on, you will not be weary. You will walk, you will not faint. You will not be tired. The red carpet is now stretched before you. Move on. March on. Walk on. Fly on. Soar on. Until you get to the top, the Lord has ordained for you. We well, thank you, Lord. We know it is done. Put testimony in every mouth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.